Well done. Um, I just want to encourage you to do so much more. Um, as if you were a child looking at it, you have um, a very violinistic set of what you dare to do. And then for me, there would be a thousand colors and images and things you should be doing reacting to music like this. And as you know, Chacona in the suite, it's, it's a dance movement. You don't dance. I don't know whether you, in real life you dance, but here um, you promote, a, it is um, solid and very serious. And it should be serious at times, most of the times. It should be weeping, it should be dancing, it should be screaming. And you don't, for my taste, you don't go out of, out of being on top of the chacona. Mm -hmm. And you don't accept harmonies in the sense that there is a harmony like this, which is the dissonance with the consonants, which is, so to say, a release. And you also don't accept that, oh, I don't hear, that the beginning of the chacon is four voices. Two voices. Going from a scream to resignation. Next try. chord, this one, uh, which obviously from harmony and from size is the goal of this. And so, and that's through the whole chakona, there is size all the time and mm, yeah, you play really uh, exactly the same intensity for the tension and the release. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it is a dance, um, part of a suite, um, nobody should in dancing put his weight on every beat of the bar. In, in the first dancing, that, so if, if you don't mind, I, I, I think I can speak openly, mm -hmm. uh, openly to you. That, you play very uh, strongly and seriously, and I know, uh, but I want to be uh, clear about what I try to say. If one plays... Uh, yes, the intention is dark and big, but for me it is not human enough. That feeling... Uh, oh my God, what's happening to me? It, it is moving my body, it's not... Uh, if, as Bach is a composer of cantatas oratoria, and at that time, language and music were almost one thing. Every, every word and every sentiment would have a certain figure. I don't think this ever existed. <laughs> First variation. Why does he in, um, uh, introduce a dotted rhythm if it's not a da 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 dee, uh, uh, moving through your body and uh, and you have to imagine this is the let's say the oboe da ba ba and then the orchestra does. This is, um, the whole thing is such a sense of drama. And when we go, yeah, the passus durioscolos, we cannot uh, stay with its sound. Um, it is all. Sorry, I'm just rambling on and then I make you uh, play or something like this. 
Because they, or he writes arpeggio, all of a sudden it becomes something mechanical. Every every moment, oh. what's happening there? Somebody's running away. He's totally scared, and um, um, so this I want to just throw at you that there is tons of expressions out there that have. In the end, also to with violent technique, but you have to forget about basically everything that's not language. Yeah, language as in the. Yeah, nobody talks. That it, it, also a constant rubato would be for me the natural thing if it's about emotive things. Yeah, even in some. Uh, yeah, a, a dance movement. You know? yeah. So and now I I let you invent something because of course the wonderful thing about it is we don't have dynamics. We don't have uh, we have of course the knowledge of what we violinists did at the time and what the general figures of tension release. Uh, dangerous harmonies, sinful harmonies, death, and all these images we know, but we still have the possibility to start like you. Or both totally valid begins of the piece, and everywhere we have freedom, but we need to be far out. We need to be open like nowhere else with our body and our images. Yeah? Chaconda rhythm, what is it consists of? Second beat. First and second boot, yeah? Think of the Sarabanto. Yeah, so. But it means that the third beat is a loose beat. So now the. And that one, two. One, two, so heavy, and you play all those chords that he doesn't write, you shouldn't, yeah? Bach writes and for a while one played it, not necessary, and it also makes it very different, and, yeah? That we are not sitting, but we are moving in dance. So, if you play, uh, there might be a place in the piece where you want to be like this, but the feeling of is that you are in movement. It's not if you're. Our, we 
always wanting to sound good and for this revision. <laughs> Tomol doesn't come with uh, doesn't come with hook bowing. Yeah, uh, um, um, so it doesn't have to be totally loud. But da 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 dee. The difference between the, it becomes more personal. I think that's one single person reacting to the theme. Yeah. But yeah, da da ding. Yeah, it needs to make sense. Why would he write da da di da da? It's not. It's sudden jolt mm -hmm. in your body. Okay, go. I'm trying not to say it, but mostly away here. You know. Uh, when you can really, really mean and sound. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, before I forget, if you play string for that, and your second fiddle would do this, you would yell it. Yeah, I play it, and you play it, and the second fiddle does that. No, no way. Yeah. But the vibrato, so here, no good. No good. So, but never just one note and one instrument. It doesn't make, maybe the... Maybe they are good for a little mm -hmm. shake for... Geminiani writes about 10 different kinds of vibrato, one for anger, one for love, one for uh, being scared. And so it, it is a wonderful thing to use, but only in that respect that you use it and don't, mm -hmm. don't put it where it's possible. Okay, go from here. <laughs> without the two beats. Uh, and, and that's the one without, yeah? And it, in, in many parts of the piece, it's two measures with a bam, 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 bam. And you would be surprised to find the sarabat. <laughs> So dum 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 throughout the whole sarabon. So we need to make it um, a, give a clear picture of, of the drama of it. Okay, let's go and uh, what is generally important for the whole movement. Your legato and your detaché basically are the same. So whereas the legato and the detaché is for Bach one of the few possibilities to denote where he's sees the emphasis. A legato, by definition, is a vowel. You cannot slur an R or, it doesn't, or an L. It doesn't sound good. It's meaning... Uh, and then you will see that the whole 
algorithmic organization, when there is no chords, is done by the slurs. And if it sounds the same, you, it is like an abstract, long, good sounding, a D minor moment, but all the things, um, so where can we um, start here? Start here. with the baroque bow um, you would have seen uh, this feeling of making the slurs and the other notes in between like this gives a very interesting sound picture but also a good sound and meaningful because uh, we cannot control do this with 10 different shades here then it becomes a big job. And here... Yeah. And its possibilities. But use your hand and slow bow at least sometimes. Yeah. changing the voice, of course you're changing the whole rhythmic setup of the piece. So I would be careful with that because it is one of the very, very few Baroque pieces where actually all the bowings are put in by the first player of this pieces himself and that was Johann Sebastian Bach. Yeah? Good. Then... Everything is tragic in the first part. There is here an element of pride. Yeah, we try to, um, it's uh, because of the speed, it almost has the, the wish to, to be, uh, to run yes. away or to avoid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's almost a sense of freedom of getting away from. So don't say, robato and excited. Yeah. 
Do you think anything like this has been ever composed before? Harmonically? Yeah. And... So, uh, you go piano and then you say for me... cannot stand by. I mean, you have to suffer every of these harmonies and it's maybe options are so endless. I mean, it could be the first, which doesn't dare to say it. Which, this one is the most normal. It's just a diminished seven, so it could be human relief of weeping. But then, uh, that can only be bitter in a way. So, uh, search, search here and there and there for something that you have not said before. And then you come to the land of mystery. Um, notice the chacon. comes with the metronome here, I get angry, yeah? This is, uh, and, and, then, uh, and then the soprano comes in on the high A. It cannot be done, yeah. And sweetly now the second fiddle. different line bases and when it comes to the big climax it doesn't have to play loud um, it, it could be very loud but it also needs to be totally out of yourself, rhythmically, and then at the end... Uh, yeah, if there was ever a cadence, then it's this. And I still hear that somewhere there is a metronome and you're going, okay, now I do this. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm not letting you play, but... Um, Is it okay if, uh, if no, that's fair? Right? Yeah, so um, when we come to this part... Uh, it sounded wonderful in the beginning. But also here it is the dance with a tender feeling of something being good, but always personal, I find, because you go very soft and then... Uh, That sound like somebody maybe something, saying something. And now the chakon. So the, the one walking on top, commenting, but the voice is down there. So, more inventive and free in whatever you dare to do. Can I hear from here once more? Mm -hmm. So, what is the voice doing? Just shape-wise. Can you make it clear to me? The 
that's all it needs. It's, it's all there, but this is the things you did not do. So the complaint in the beginning is we are in D minor. And again, and now the B is here. Yeah, do the whole thing again for me, yes? shape-wise and musically. So, and just look at this, that's why I say with the eye of a child. Uh, what's there, where do the things move up? Do they fall down, is there slurs or not? And the whole thing will have total shape. It is very simple to read the piece. It's not, not a complicated piece. Uh, it, it, even from the expression, it is as clear as things can get. So this is my advice to you, yeah? But in wonderful playing anyway, yeah?